Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome again to our 15 minutes podcast without data. This is going to be the last series in our series of teaching that we started two weeks ago on praying from position of answer. Remember, we started this series two weeks ago and we're going to be running it up today. Remember, we started when I told you that uh, your position is very important to your health and to your world. I proved to us from Isaiah, Isaiah said, by stripe you were healed. When Peter was speaking in 1 Peter 2.24, he did not misquote Isaiah, he interpreted Isaiah. He interpreted it to me, by stripe ye were healed. Because Jesus Christ already received the stripe in Matthew 27, 26. Did you see that? So now when Isaiah was, when Peter was speaking, he did not quote Isaiah, he interpreted it. Now I said to us, when you are standing for your healing, you don't quote Isaiah, you interpret Isaiah. Are you hearing me now? So in your prayer, you don't ask God for your healing. You thank God for your healing. And you take your healing. Did you see now? So it is wrong for me to stand in front of camera and tell you that God is going to heal you today. No, God won't heal you today. Do you know what? He has actually healed you 2,000 years ago, over 2,000 years ago. So what you need to do now is get up and take the healing. Refuse the sickness. Tell the devil, you can't put it again on me. My elder brother took it. You can't put it back on me. Stand against it. Now listen to me. Even if you are taking drug, tell the doctor what is going to be your next result. Tell the doctor what's going to be. Tell them the result of the test before it comes out. You know what? Because you are taking the drug from position of answer. You are taking the test from position of answer. You are not taking it from position of the need to detect anything. No. You are taking it from a position to confirm what you have. Did you catch that now? So do everything from position of result. And I showed us example in the Bible from, from um, Mark chapter 5. The woman said, for she said, if I, may be, if I may touch but the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. That meaning that she touched the hem of Jesus' garment from position of answer, not position of need for healing. No. Because she already knew it from Malachi 4.2. That the Bible said there shall be healing in his wings. So she knew from verse 5 of that Malachi 4 that Christ is coming. And Isaiah, sorry, and Elijah is going to come before the Lord. And this Lord is coming as a priest who has a prayer shawl. And the wings of the prayer shawl is where the healing is. So the woman knows the truth. So she walked with the truth. She acted on the truth. She spoke as somebody who knows the truth. And she got the truth. The reason, so what you need is to act on the truth. That by strife you are healed. Talk the truth by stripe you are healed. Confess the truth by stripe you are healed. Don't say by stripe I'm healed or by stripe I will be healed. No, 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 no. You are already healed. Did you get that? You are already healed. So she spoke from position of answer. She spoke from position of answer. Do you see now? And I said to us also that healing is actually an exchange. The same way everything is also an exchange. And I give us an example of the prodigal son. The prodigal son was broke financially. Because you see, this praying from position of answer does not just come to affect your physical body. It affects also your finances. The prodigal son was broke because of his own maid. So sometimes you could, you could have also became broke because of your maid. But that, does not, that will not keep you there. The position you take in your position in your state is what will determine whether you stay there or things will change. Now, the prodigal son spoke from the position, look, there's an employer who can pay very well and keep me in wealth. And she got just that. Now, listen to this. The angels never go, went broke at any time. We have never seen angels on earth looking for employment that heaven is broke. No, 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 no. There's always abundance in heaven. 
And the Bible now says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that even though he was rich, but for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might be rich. Now, meaning that, if I know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, I should not be talking from my need position. I should be talking from the grace position. Do you get what I'm saying now? So I don't say we cannot afford that. I don't say I am broke because I can never be broke. You know why? Because it was an exchange. Jesus Christ can never be poor. I showed us from Matthew 27. In Matthew 27, I showed us, sorry, in Matthew 17 from verse 24, I showed us that even when he didn't have money to pay his bill in the temple, he improvised. So meaning that Christ can never be broke, but the only way Christ can be broke, you know how? The only way Christ can be broke is for Christ to exchange his position with my own position. I take his position or he takes my position. So he's constantly broke like me and I'm constantly rich like him. So if I understand that grace now, now I don't talk again from position of need. I talk from position of grace. So when there's a need in my life, I only say I need more data. I only say I need more bread. I only say I need more trouser. I need more shoe. I need more this. I need more that. And that's what Paul said in Philippians 4.19. My God shall supply. My God shall supply. Now listen to this. I have a company that I've, I became a customer with them over the years. When there's a need for water in my house, and just put a phone call to them, I need more water. They said, okay, sir, so we'll supply. They don't ask me for money. Because I have the account. I pay the bills. Do you see now? So they don't ask me for money. So anytime I need water, I don't tell them, hey guys, I'm broke. How can you guys help me there? No, 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 no. They don't even know whether I'm broke or I'm not broke. I just tell them, can I have more water? They said yes. And then once I have money within some few days, orders, I credit the account. So when the next one comes, I just put call. The same thing, speak also from position of grace. Don't speak from position of a broke person. You are not broke. Christ became broke so that you can stay rich. You see, it's an exchange. And I said to us, the Bible said, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that even though he was rich, but for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might be. So you're a rich man. So you can only need more of all those things. Who pays the bill? God pays the bill. You just need more. You just need more. That's all you know. You just know that you need more. Mm -hmm. So now I said to us that everything about salvation is exchange. God exchanged the, the dying priest with a living priest. God exchanged the, 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 the earthly tabernacle with the, with, the, the, with the heavenly one. Now, when it comes to hell and heaven, now, I'm not going to go to heaven because I did not sin. No, 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 no. Every sin I sinned is credited to Jesus' account and it takes Jesus Christ to hell. You know why? Because Jesus Christ can't go to hell. God has no legal right to send Christ to hell. Christ can only go to hell if he has sinned. And the Bible says that Christ cannot sin. 2 Corinthians uh, 5, 24, he had made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? Christ did not know sin. So if Christ didn't know sin, Christ can't go to hell. Yet Christ went to hell. How did he make it? He collected my sins. So I gave him all my sins. And do you know what? But the Bible said that even my righteousness is like a filthy rag. So even if I work very hard to be righteous, it's still a filthy rag. I can still not make heaven. So the only way I can make heaven is to collect the righteousness of Christ. So we, we exchanged. That's what we did. So I just gave Jesus Christ my sin and he gave me his righteousness. So his righteousness is what I'm using to enter heaven. So he used my own sin to enter hell. So that's what it is. So the same thing with, 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 uh, with uh, healing. The Bible says that he received the stripes the stripes tore his body. And do you know what? His body can never be torn because his body is immortal. But my own is mortal. Sickness can attack me. Infirmity can attack me. Disease can attack my body. But do you know what we did? God took my body and gave me the body of Christ. So Christ's body can only be torn if he has mortal body, which he collected from me. And my own also can only be torn if I collect, if 
I collect, uh, what's it called? If I collect Christ's own, uh, can, my own also can stay held if I collect Christ's own. So, so we exchange our body. So my physical body is not, the body I am now is not my body, it's Christ's body. My body was given to Christ. So that's why his own was torn by the stripes, by, by, the, by that stripes. So it was an exchange. So the fact that you are feeling the way you are feeling does not mean you are actually feeling it. You can only accept it if you talk from that position. So start talking from the position that Christ can never be here, can never be sick, and, and, and talk from the position, from that position. So don't talk he, sick, sickness, talk heavy. Do you get what I'm talking about now? So when they said, when they said we're going to test for this, I tell them yes, it's going to be positive. When they said, this is the result, we said, no, it's not possible to get that result. Can you repeat it again? Did you say I'm saying? Because you are talking from position of health. Now, many people are sick today because they accepted that result. The first day you were diagnosed for cancer, you accepted it. Did you see now? Because you didn't know that Christ has exchanged his body with your body. Listen to me. Cancer cannot stay in Christ's body. So if they diagnose cancer in your body, tell them to repeat the test that it is practically impossible. I don't care how many times they will do it. Let them run it for as many times as they want to run it. Because you understood that your body has been exchanged. So talk from that position of exchange and that's what the bible says in in, in second Corinthians 5 to say for he had made him to be seen for us because he did not sin so he has to be made wouldn't you know sin that we might be made the righteousness of god because we also cannot do righteousness so we can only be made it did you see now so that's exactly what happened so in finances that's what happened in our healing that's what happened in our salvation that's what happened and then let me round up like this looking back again into the testimony of the prodigal son. He said the story of the prodigal son is a story of salvation. Now the Bible said that the father was constantly, sorry, sorry, the Bible said that when the prodigal son was coming, his father was the one that saw him first. He was not even the one that saw the father. So his father saw him first. It means that his father was expecting him. Listen to me. Those your loved ones that have not given their life to Jesus Christ, don't have sleepless night over them again. Stop praying for them to be saved because they have been saved. Look at what Ephesians 4 to say. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. So salvation is the gift. Is a gift. The salvation of your loved one is a gift. You don't beg for a gift. You don't solicit for a gift, or else it's no longer a gift. So salvation is a gift. So receive the gift on their behalf and thank God for that gift on their behalf. Did you see now? So you've got to start praying for your loved one from position of answer. Stop asking God to save them. He has already saved them. Salvation has now become a gift. For by grace are you saved through faith. The Bible said that we have access into this grace by faith. If grace has not made it available, faith cannot obtain it. So the Bible says, and not of yourself, it is the gift of God. So it is the gift of God. So for your love not to be saved is a gift. So you've got to start praying to God from the position of that gift. Don't pray from the position that they are still hooked to beer. They are still hooked to that. They are still hooked to this. They are still hooked to that. No, pray from the position of gift. Start thanking God for his gift. Of salvation in the life of so so and so, in the life of so so and so, in the life of so so and so, start praying from that position of answer. So, why most of our loved ones are still not saved is because we are praying from the position that God should save them. We are not praying from the position of gift. Listen to me once a gift is given, all you have left is to thank the person. If you are still asking that person, that it means that you have not received what the person sent as a gift. So, thank you so much for standing behind the camera and watching me and listening to me for these two weeks. So, I'm out of time. So, for me here, I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I will see you in our Monday podcast. God bless you from here. Jesus Christ is Lord forever. <laughs>